full sequence. Everybody saying Moses Palibe. I say Moses Palibe is just a proxy of James Marathon. And I make no secret. No, Brother Nama doesn't make any secret. I fear nobody. I only fear my little bit. How long are we gonna allow this thing to go? We must not give Marabe one more day in office. This time is out. And he needs to go. We like-minded leaders, we have decided now to exit from government. Basically because we have the lost confidence in the leadership of the Honorable James Marat. Today marks a very important occasion for one of our vibrant, outstanding governors who has supported the, the Marape Russell government. Since Marape became Prime Minister, he has decided that enough is enough. The interest of the people of this country is more important than you. And I want to announce today that uh, our Honorable Governor, who he simply has decided that he will now reside for the government, and I will allow him to speak for himself. And we have also a member from Bulolo, filling his father's seat, shoes. He has decided he will also exit government. Many people have been posting that Morabe is uh, dominated by Pangu. But if you look at it very closely, Pangu only won four seats in Morabe in the last election. And I believe if my brother Sam Basi was al alive today, or during that election, he would have won more seats. And I'm really thankful today to see the level of confidence and maturity in this uh, young leader for Bulong in uh, Sam Basi Jr. to step up and step forward and say enough is enough. We also have a member of WeWork uh, who is running late, he'll be joining us very shortly. You can see that uh, everybody has been posting uh, that uh, Momase is with uh, the Pangu government. Well, Momase is not. The leadership of Alan Bed, Governor Alan Bed, the leadership of uh, uh, Sam Basel Jr. is demonstrating to the country that we have also have enough. You see the contracts going to one ethnic group. Connect PNG is not meant for Papua New Guinea. Connect PNG is Connect Hela. Connect Southern Islands. How long are we gonna allow this thing to go? We must not give Marabe one more day in office. This time is out. And he needs to go. When we when when the country was drafting the defense agreement with US, my committee was never consulted. Parliament must have the oversight. It was never properly debated on the floor of parliament. And who better to contribute meaningfully to the security of this country in framing the defense agreements, the, def uh, the security treaties? I have the experience in that field. But Prime Minister never consulted my committee. And you know what? When the defense agreement was drafted and it was approved and signed by the defense minister, whether they read it or not, or he read it or not, or the Prime Minister read it or not, in that argument it said that we concede our constitution or our jurisdiction. How can you concede your jurisdiction? That means, you know, whoever comes in will do anything he wants. He's above the law. Our constitution means nothing. <coughs> Same with the security treaty with Australia that was signed recently. It has never been debated on the floor of parliament. Same with the creation of additional ministries. There is no proper policy. When you create a ministry, you are literally creating a department as well. COVID doesn't have a department. Livestock doesn't have a department. And then now we create another ministry. Another five ministries that's added on with no departments. We are not running a country. We are, it's like we are running a taka shop at Erima. The country is supposed to be run by legislation and policy. I cannot work with this government. And you would see my governor for ECP can now stand up on the floor of parliament. Member for Chuabe, member for Irikoyar. We would stand up on the floor of parliament and we would debate like we are in the opposition. But nobody listens. We have a Prime Minister who doesn't listen, unfortunately. Then now I refer back to why he's not listening. Because he made a declaration on his 
on the first day of his election into office that he will run this country on his DNA, on his own mantra, on his own manifesto. He has no regard for the systems and processes that you need to follow. That's the Prime Minister. He has no regard for fair and equal distribution of our nation's wealth, which our forefathers have lived by. And then they'll come out there and be like, compare me to the most former Prime Minister. It's an insult to the intelligence of the Papua New Guineans. It's an insult to our founding fathers. He's posting about 200 billion in a <coughs> gold. If you look at it very carefully, there's not been any internal revenue in this country except the borrowings. So that 200 billion or 100 billion economists posting about this, that you know that they ascended, brought into the system, into a, into a budgetary process. There is no growth in our country, as my governor has rightfully said. So where are we heading? We are skydiving downwards. You cannot compare yourself with late Sir Mekare Morata. He's the father of reform. He's the, he's the reformist in this country. He's a game changer. He's the fiction. You cannot talk about Somari in this country. Somari grew the economy. He managed the debt level in this country. He had a debt management strategy in place. And then he wanted to grow the agricultural sector, at the same time looking after health and education, and all the enabling infrastructures that will enable the development of our country. <coughs> I know this. This guy has come up with a very good scam policy of connecting energy. You know, this year's budget, he forget about the vaccines. He cut the vaccine budget by 25 million and lumped all the money into Connect PNG and created a discretionary vote of 2.9 billion. And who does he pay first? And I make no secrets. He pays, he points first, 700 million dollars. It's no secret. Who is he points? Everybody saying Moses Palipe. I say Moses Palipe is just a proxy of James Marathi. And I make no secret. No, Brother Nama doesn't make any secret. I fear nobody. <laughs> I only fear my little man. <laughs> Members of Parliament, wake up and see what's happening. The Black Wednesday should have been the day in any right frame, right frame minded Prime Minister he would have resigned. Especially when the security forces of this country, the last line of defense, they question your leadership, your administration, the defense, police, and the CIA. I have debated many times on the floor of parliament. You don't feed them well, you don't clothe them well, and you don't house, house them well, and you ask them to jump, you never respond. But instead, they will come at you like a raging bull. That was what happened on the 10th of January, the Black Wednesday. In any right frame minded prime minister, he would have resigned. They went to the prime minister's office. And if the gate was broken open, they would have raided that office. Why? You can't, bl you can't blame them. You blame your leadership. So I resigned because my committee, who was supposed to be consulted, was not consulted. I resigned because. We creating jobs for ourselves in creating additional ministries. I was sitting down with Sir Ipetas, and he was telling me, the guy is boasting about growing the economy to 200 billion, and how about the little people, they're not feeling the pins of the economy is boasting about. And I've always said, through this unprecedented level of denial in our country, Marbe has put Papua New Guinea into ICU. We are life support. Thank you, Governor, for his for the decision you made. You know, I always say, Governor feels a very important issue and the sue of the founding father of our country. His announcement today is like 10 members of parliament already walking up. And I salute my governor. I salute my son and member for Bunolo. Sam Basil Jr. For the stance you have taken, I see the spirit of Sam Basil alive in you. 
and I want to thank you. And I hope and pray that the rest of the members of UMP can see this. The rest of the Morobe can see this. Under Marabe leadership, he has traveled to more countries than any other prime minister. He is a traveling <coughs> prime minister. But the thing is, for so many uh, travels that he has made, there is not one if, uh, single foreign direct investment that he has brought into the country. Nothing. No one single foreign direct investment. And he doesn't understand. When you go to foreign countries, they will give you red card, but that's normal. But that doesn't mean that they trust your leadership. <coughs> That's a fact. When they don't bring their investment into the country, they don't trust your leadership. Barak will say, yes, we'll open tomorrow, but they will never stop because they don't like the way you have tried to cut the feet. You have destroyed an operating gold mine when the gold price was at 2,000 US dollars per ounce and cut out 3,600 jobs. <coughs> you cannot come out and blame Peter on it. Peter Warner was not a finance minister for eight years. Who was eight, the longest finance minister in this country? James Warren. You cannot now come and say, oh, I blame James, uh, Peter O'Neill. Who signed a UBS loan so that it can be drawn down? What if they signed a UBS loan? Who authorized a payment to poor paragraphs? And I want to announce and assure the people of public need today, I am the principal complainant of that I make no secrets about it. I compile all the evidence and they will not escape. How can you be a state witness when you are a participant in a crime? You are the accomplice in a crime. <coughs> Marabe cannot be a state witness. He should be prosecuted. Don Polier cannot be a state witness. He should be pro prosecuted. I compile that entire investigation. I am the principal of I want to tell the public. So they will not hide. Marbe has been recommended by the Ombudsman Commission in the investigation to the UBS law. They did sign, not Peter O'Neill. Peter O'Neill didn't sign that agreement. He was the Section 36 officer who penned off for UBS. Look at the Ombudsman Commission report. I cried foul when I was the leader of opposition when they allocated 28 million for the Commission of Inquiry. The Commission of Inquiry was a waste of time. The Ombudsman Commission had already made the recommendations on who to prosecute, and Prime Minister Marbe is one of them. So let's get all this clear. Marbe is the owner of Ipwes. Also, Marbe is a, is a partner. I make no secrets. So what I'm trying to say is that this guy is operating on a knee-jerk reaction. He will drive on the road and see a portal and call Sol and Mirisin. Or there's a portal, find 20 million and go and fix it. In 2023, we passed a budget. Rango Paita was dressed in mixed Chihuahua and Simbo Regilia, and I criticized him. Because they, he was dressed like that because he had a two billion in miscellaneous parked under his control. They used that money in the election. They drew down 1.1 million immediately after the election, just before the books closed in 2023. They drew down the balance of 900 million. And only not think in the country, only in a private bank account room. The way they are eating into the budget system. That's why I have declared that Connect PNG is the biggest procurement scam in our country. Biggest procurement scam. On a PNG Luminamon. You are going and building new roads and how about the existing roads? When our forefathers first designed the country, they built those existing roads linked to those places. You would have been building the road from Lei all the way to Wutu, connecting the three Mumasek provinces. You should have been building the road from Lei to Garena coming down to Popendata and coming to Formosa. We should be building a road from Karama all the way connecting Alata. That's connect PNG. And you put in on areas where you just use it to pay your own boys. Now you see certain uh, young groups from a 
selected the ethnic group running around with suits. Aaron Williams with PXS. We've seen that. This is reality. This is the Prime Minister we have. He's not here for the country. That's why I want to end it by this. He borrowed a slogan from Gary Jufa, the governor of Ohoro, to say that take back PNG. Now I'm saying that it is time to take back PNG from Maradona. Thank you and God bless my <laughs>